Do you enjoy watching my videos and want to help support the channel? Reaction videos on YouTube tend to get copyright claims on them at some point, making it extremely difficult for any of us to monetize. Kofi is a website designed specifically to help creators get support for the content they produce for their fan base. It helps us continue to bring quality videos to you every week. And the best part? It costs less than a cup of coffee. Click the link in the description for more. Hi guys, Jarrell here, Grey Wolf TV, and today we are doing a season review of Stranger Things. We've now completed season one, and the show has been absolutely great. Loved every part of it. Intriguing, funny, and in general, a really enjoyable show. So, if we go right back to the beginning, we're introduced to the, the group of lads, which was very reminiscent of me, of... Uh, the old film Stand By Me with Will Wheaton in it, if you haven't seen it. And the fact that they decided to set the show back in the 80s was a masterpiece of writing because a lot of what we saw in the show and what takes place and how it was put together and how the characters would have responded would be completely different in today's world with all the technology that we have, especially with mobile phones and social media and everything else. So the fact it was set in the 80s was great. They really captured what the 80s was like. Even all the music and even the introduction music to it was kind of synth pop and quite a dark theme to it at the same time. It was only very short, but it was done well. Having a young girl as the centralized character of the show was also a smart move. We're not used to seeing that an awful lot. Not when it's someone so young. We see a lot of female protagonists as um, the years have gone by with the shows lately, but not usually a child, not someone so young as Elle. The fact that we see everything that's been done to her and the experiments that have taken place in the laboratory in the government facility with Brenner, how he stole her away from when she was a, ch a small child, lied to her mother, who he also experimented on. And just some of the scenes that they showed with Elle, she's a fantastic little actress. She really conveyed a sense of immaturity and but at the same time depression anxiety loneliness everything that you would go through if you've been sealed up in four walls and never been subjected to the outside world ever and the only person you knew as a father was that guy the chief hopper i think was also a really good character there's too many shows out there that when they are based in a small town they make the sheriff out to be either corrupt or a complete moron i like that they made hopper somebody with a bit of a, a troubled background what with his relationship with his wife that's gone downhill after losing his own child but that he still cares and that the job still means something to him and that at every step of the way, as he started these investigations, he stayed on the trail. No matter where the evidence led him, he just said, right, well, if that's the way it's going, I'll head that way. And when it started to turn, I think it was about episode four or five, when he started to realize that the missing boy he's looking for, which was Will, he wasn't just lucky for well he'd been chasing l not realizing it but he still followed the trail and then he started to realize that there's something more going on here there's something far darker and the government is involved and he just he just went with it a lot of sheriffs at that point would have probably backed off and if the government had got involved they would have told him to back off and they would have left it at that so I like that they, they gave him the depth of character to pursue his own 
line of thinking. We don't know an awful lot about his daughter. We've got a few scenes at the end of the season as to what happened to her. We know she probably died of cancer. And he's reminiscing back when he's trying to look at saving well. Nancy, to begin with, um, I, I didn't really like her, so there wasn't much to her as a character, but her um, progression throughout the series as she started to get involved with what was going on with the creature. And once she found out about that, her character opened up. Her boyfriend, Steve, is just, he's meant to be the douchebag. But even the writers have decided to go with the turnaround on him and make him realize that he's been foolish and the reason he's actually had to change her heart is because he actually got feelings for her, which most lads at that age tend to not have. They just move from girl to girl. I know I did it. Um, the writing of the show and the sets, the just the ambience of what they've done with it, I think was really good. The actual cinematography and the special effects were top notch, couldn't knock them at all. A lot of the times you get the special effects that are perfectly fine while they are, even if the CG, they're perfectly okay mimicking animals or crashes or vans flipping, stuff like that. But when it comes to actually having CG, when it comes to portraying having a monster on screen, that obviously can't be real, usually it lets it down. It kind of looks a little bit B-rate, but this didn't. This looked good. They kept a lot of the scenes dark enough and lights flickering because of the creature being there for you to never really get a full daylight true picture of what the creature looked like which helped it become believable i think in general it has been put together really really well it drew me in i wasn't so sure after the first episode i'm like hmm but from, from episode two, it drew me in because there was so much going on and you had so many questions you had to see through. A lot of the scenes that we get with Joyce when Will first goes missing is of just sheer despair how any parent would be if a child has gone missing under normal circumstances to begin with they just think somebody's taken him or he's died or he's fallen in the quarry or whatever and she didn't know at that point but i like that it showed the despair that a parent goes through when they think their child's gone and they may not get them back but as soon as she started to realize that communication was happening with the lights and the telephone and that it was well her determination to make sure she got to the truth was done very well even when she was faced with them presenting a body of him early on in the season and going there he is he's dead leave it alone but she didn't she pursued it the same as Hopper did and it made the show all that more believable where they're gonna go with it for season two I have absolutely no idea I've got an inkling that it's going to open up and start right with Will now we know there's something wrong with him I like that they've put in it at the end of the season that we get Will back, but all is not well. And to give you the sense of not knowing what's gonna happen to him. Something's clearly laid inside his throat. But also, at least from my point of view, I'm thinking, is it Will or isn't it? It takes you back to being a kid and out all day 
doing what you want, parents not knowing where you are, which is how it was back in the 80s. There was no mobile phones, there was no traceability of knowing where you are. You went out for the day, your parents had had no clue where you are until it went dark and you had to be home before the lights came on. And I like that they captured that time because unfortunately that time is now gone. Kids don't go out on the bikes on their own anymore. They don't go out exploring. They're not four miles away playing in a quarry or whatever because everything's so dangerous now. And I like that they captured that. It takes you back to being a kid, especially if you're my age group and I was that age in the 80s. So I was within two or three years of their age group, I was the same in the 80s. And that... Um, expression of freedom that you had when you were a kid that you went out and anything couldn't happen that day you could have any sort of adventure and the adventure that they were taken on with l was was fabulous i'm hoping maybe it moves on which i'm sure it will do because the actors the boys and l have going to grow up a bit before they started season two so i'm hoping it comes back with them maybe two or three years older but we'll have to see. I'm not sure. That was the other thing. Brenner, I thought they kind of wrote his character very similar to Cancer Man from the X-Files. If you don't know who I mean, and you don't know the X-Files, and you don't know who Cancer Man is, go Google it, at least. I'm not expecting you to go and watch 10 seasons of the X-Files, but at least go and Google it, or look it up on Wikipedia. Because he was a government agent and he was pretty much in charge, they kind of aligned it with that character. I just feel that because he was the main bad guy, other than the creature, he was the main bad human bad guy, that they didn't give him a very good send-off of a death. It was a very short cut scene and that was it. Creature's got him, he's gone. And they didn't dwell on it at all. So now we're left with Hopper getting in the back of that government car. They came and picked him up and he had an agreement with them that if he let, they let him and Joyce go find Will, everyone keeps quiet about this. This never happened. We're never going to speak about what happened with all the experiments that you've done and we'll keep quiet. I'm presuming that agreement was with Brenner. So what's going to come out of that with the rest of the room at the government facility now i don't know it was very familiar to me of a spooky stephen king novel and the retro feel with it being 80s right down to like the spooky wards the walkie talkies which back then were like as best technology as you could get to stay in communication if you're a bunch of kids the sign of every time Elle used her powers, she had a nosebleed. That that was a sign of mental effort. The other thing I had to notice, because I said it reminds me of Stand By Me with Will Wheaton, Elle is kind of, she kind of looks like a half between a young Will Wheaton and a young Winona Ryder, which is Joyce. They gave us a little bit of backstory with Brenner and how long the government has been doing this, that it way, went way back to the 50s and the 60s, which we know went on. And that all these experimentation to try to activate abilities, expand the mind, especially with all the new drugs coming available, especially once we got to the 70s, we had um, LSD and the like, that all of this would have been for the government to try to find new and inventive ways of spying on our Ruski friends, Russia, back during the Cold War. And that that would have been the original intent of being able to use all of these test subjects. So guys, that is my little take on Stranger Things season one so far. I'm by no means a critic. <laughs> Definitely not. I'm just giving you my honest opinion of what I thought of the show and what kept me 
intrigued and kept me hooked and watching throughout the season. Let me know in your comments, post them down below, tell me your thoughts, what you thought of the show, especially for those of you that have probably seen further than I have, but don't give me any spoilers for season two, okay? Right, so this video will be available on YouTube and over on Patreon for your watch. It doesn't need to be edited in any way other than my mistakes. <laughs> so that's it. We will be back with Stranger Things Season 2, the first episode in the next few days. And until then, I hope you've enjoyed Season 1 with me. I've thoroughly enjoyed watching it. I can't wait to start Season 2. So if you enjoyed it, guys, and if you like the ride with me, carry on i'll be back very soon like share and subscribe and i'll see you for episode one of season two in the next few days take care